I got hooked on crack in Hollywood. For six weeks, I was smoking crack. I'd buy it right by the theater, by Man's Chinese Theater. Right on that corner, would be two black guys. We'd make eye contact. They beat me. They beat me five, ten times. They'd sell me soap. These cocksuckers. And my fingers were always dirty and shit. My wife would wake up. What is that fucking smell? The weed. Go back to bed. I would smoke it out of a Coke can. That's then a I went gnarly to, fucking smell. Then I went to El Paso and there was no crack. So I got hooked back on the Coke and I didn't smoke crack again. Tremendous how addictions transfer and shit like that. I didn't <laughs> smoke crack. I never thought I'd smoke crack. Me but neither, man. I didn't like, listen, in 82, Freebase was getting big. Is that different from crack? It's, it's just powder, relevant, right? right? Bro, it was fucking stupid white people. <laughs> they wasted yes. my fucking time. Wasted my fucking time. Okay, and Timmy, there's a kid who listens to the podcast, Timmy Holloway, my buddy. Timmy. Grew up with him. Timmy. Me, him, me, him, and this this black dude, a friend of mine came up to me one day, he goes, bro, I heard you got good coke. I just graduated <laughs> high school. I go, yeah, I can hook you up. He goes, dog, I sell coke to pimps. He goes, I got these pimps down in Jersey City or whatever that will buy coke from you. We got to go down to the hotel. But the guy that was going to, that's where I got the word tremendous from. Everything in this kid's life, you, he'd say tremendous. How's the how are the girls? Tremendous. How's the coke? Tremendous. tremendous. How was that right turn? Trem- tremendous. He would even tell you that right turn was tremendous. So we went down. Steve Valanis. I, th- I don't. I forget what the fuck his name was, dog. Tremendous. We went to this hotel room. It's the summer of '82. I'm getting my coke from a high school teacher. But now, since we were out of high school, he would sell us. Mr. The- Belden. Huh? No, I don't know if it was Mr. Belden. It was the camel. Let's just call him Camel Breath. Because he used to smoke Camel Fucking cigarettes camel with no breath. filter. And his cigarette was orange from the Camel Damn. cigarettes. Tremendous. So Camel Breath, Tremendous. he would sell you the Coke already in a fucking bindle. So we went down to those pimps. I gave him a couple grams. Here's the Coke, but you still got an F in his final. What's that? No, no, we were out of school. He wouldn't fuck <laughs> with us then. And the pimp was like, dog, have you ever free base? And I go, no, but we'll give it a shot. And he did the whole thing. He had his, all his hookers there. And they were like, he was a magician. Woo. And he did it, but he had like the silk scarf and shit, you know. He was like Steven orange. Tyler he was like <laughs> orange juice Jones and shit. And he would tell the bitches, "You ain't get them, you hook a motherfuckers." And me, him, and the other two people smoked it, and it wasn't bad. And there's a place again. Next time you go back to Caroline, tell George. Joey said, "Take me to uh, East West." East West. East West is a head store that's been there. This is Gossip Coño La Madre from 1970. When I was a kid, I used to go in there and buy, uh, when people go to a tape recorder to a concert. Yes. Mm-hmm. Whatever those are called. Remember that shit in the 70s? It was called, not bootlegs. Yeah. Bootlegs. Bootlegs. People would go, go, if the Stones played six nights in the garden, you would go all six nights and they'd get one show. And But they also had a how to make fucking free bass kit for $49. No way. So I bought it. I took it home. It was butane, a glass, a silk scarf. A ton of shit, and then you. We went home. We went to my friend's house, Devo. We when I woke Fucking up in the Devo. morning, dog, all the bottles were turned upside down. There was like fifteen. We went through fifteen grams, and like at the end, the next day, I said, "What did we do? First of all, you gotta sit there and cook it, and become a chemist. It's gotta and shit. dry. It's it's white people shit. I'm sorry, manager. It's white people shit. Too much thought. Just give it to me, God. Give me that motherfucking mule. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's get that jaw going. Give me a little freeze. I got a cavity back here. <laughs> let's get, let's get this. Bol- Fuck yeah! Let's get the Bolivian Fuck yeah. band going. <laughs> but you can't do that no more. We gotta be decent people. We gotta respect ourselves. We gotta be comedians and shit. Top notch. Top notch, man. You know what I'm saying? If you want to get yeah, to man. the top, you can't bring that mule with you. <laughs> so as long as you know that going in, it all works out for you and shit like that. Yeah, man. The first time I tried crack, I liked it, man. I heard it's fucking instantly addictive. I've never heard anybody that's done crack that say that shit sucks. Everybody says super fucking good. I didn't listen at that point. The point of my life when I was smoking crack, it was like '98. I didn't really give a fuck, Jack. He's like, was, fuck it. Oh yeah, and, I, and some of the nights I would smoke it even if I knew it wasn't crack. <laughs> I would just smoke it because I bought it. I might as well get my money out of this. This thing tastes like saran wrap and shit. Uh, smoking almond and shit. Oh, <laughs> fucking terrible. With terrible the shit you do when you're in that level. Yeah, man, you don't care. You know, care. when you're in that fucking level, you're fucking creeping, man. 
if it's two in the afternoon and you ain't high, go fuck yourself. Get out of my face. I want you around me like I want cancer in my ball sack. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna come around here looking at me with your fucking white eyes. Thinking that you know I'm gonna re I'm gonna reform. Go fuck yourself. My morning starts at 5:30 a.m. Either you're there or you're square. You know what I'm saying?